Sup y'all, it's me, it's your boy Asmongold, and today I wanted to share with you guys an idea that I got whenever I was streaming from some of my viewers that wanted to try and help me improve my Mythic Plus clear times. Now, I guess I should just be pretty straight out and plain with what this is. It's basically doing Mythic Plus dungeons without a healer at all. So that means you're doing it with one tank and 4 DPS and no healer. Now, whenever I first heard this, I didn't really know what to think. And, no, well, that's actually not even true. I knew what to think. I thought people were trolling me. They were trying to get me to go into a Mythic Plus dungeon uh, without a healer and wipe and deplete the keystone and everybody would be in chat like ah stupid that's what you get you idiot and I would look dumb and it would just be a bad time so I didn't want to do it and then I thought about it for a little bit longer I thought about the different abilities I could use the different types of food that I could use and the comps and you know the affixes that this would be more conducive to and I actually figured I would give it a try so what you guys are going to see in this video is myself doing two different Mythic Plus dungeons, a plus 5 Arcway and a plus 4 Maw of Souls. Uh, the affix that I'm going to be doing it with, with te is teaming. The reason we didn't go higher is because uh, the 7 affix right now was skittish, and uh, fuck that. So especially as a prop warrior, and especially without a healer, did not want to deal with it. But I do think it is possible, uh, especially if you have like uh, you know a Blood Decay or something with a little bit better snap aggro than a warrior does. So anyway, uh, I wanted to share with you pretty much what the the viability of this is. Now, I'm going to kind of get right to the chase here. This is actually a very, very efficient way of farming these dungeons, especially if, uh, you know, you have a lot of people who have very, very good gear and want to try and play at a higher level. Now, we got three chests every single time. It was not even a big deal. I think this Arcway we completed in like 18 minutes or under 18 minutes. So that's all, that's over nine extra minutes under the three chest timer. So we made a ton of progress here and we did this very, very easily. Now, you guys are going to see right here that my my health is going to go up very, very fast. It's almost like I am getting healed, but I'm not. The reason for that is I'm using a food item called Fighter Chow. Now, Fighter Chow improves my out of combat man uh, sorry, mana and health regeneration. I don't know if it's mana actually, but I know it's health regeneration by 1000%. I think this is the same uh, effect that you get whenever you're using your class order hall set bonus out in the Broken Isles. And this effect works obviously inside of dungeons. I don't know if this is going to get changed or not. This is very, very integral to the method and the strategy that we're using, but it's not necessarily required. If I didn't have this, it would still be viable, but the fighter channel definitely makes pulling a lot more quickly. Uh, a lot, I guess like a lot more easy and, um, I guess like a, a lot, uh, you're able to pull faster, basically, that's what I'm trying to say. So even on bosses, this isn't really too big of a deal. Now, also, this does have a lot to do with your comp. Whenever you're playing with something like a rogue or a death knight or something like that, they don't necessarily add anything into the group. I would say the only point that you'd really want to bring a melee class if you had to would be as if they were some sort of a hybrid healer. Having a rep paladin and or an, an, an elemental shaman in here or an enhancement shaman, just any shaman or a rep paladin is going to help out a lot because rep paladin have lay on hands and it can also off heal as well so they have a lot of different utility and so even though you don't have a healer if you do get in a spot where you just play badly or something happens that isn't really supposed to happen you still have that little bit of leeway in terms of getting a little bit of heals out there without actually having a dedicated healer so that was pretty much what i was trying to do and it worked really well now you guys are going to see right here this is the maw of souls uh this is usually the speed clearing strat and we're going to be doing this on plus four it's teaming again and again guys like i'm not really trying to brag like i got a big dick because i'm clearing plus fours or anything like that but doing it with a healer and aoe pulling everything is not necessarily the easiest thing to do, but I think that you guys can do it if you have the right group and you have people who are performing at a high level. I think that doing these is more difficult than doing them with a healer because every single player needs to be performing at a higher level. Like you need to make sure you're not standing in fire, you're using your cooldowns efficiently, efficiently, and you know you're being careful and smart with your pulls while at the same time being fast. But I do believe, especially whenever it goes down to like you know like clear clear times, like doing it for like three chests and stuff like that under under tens, this is going to be that ha this has a much higher ceiling if that makes sense in terms of its efficiency and its ability to be very very uh, yield the most artifact power and the most the most gear per hour. So another thing that I want to mention is that this obviously the viability of this strategy depends on the affixes that are available for the week. Last week I definitely missed out because there was sanguine and overflowing, so it was a complete joke. But outside of sanguine and overflowing, uh, basically the two affixes that you really want to watch out for whenever you're doing this are uh, teeming and skittish. I believe those are the two main ones, and necrotic to a lesser extent, I think. 
and even I would say teaming and necrotic are the two, but it's really the two whenever they get put together. I would say that teaming and skittish, especially if somebody accidentally pulls aggro, they could just like die because we don't have a healer or something like that, which is why I opted to not really do any above plus seven for doing this. But I do think that uh, with this strategy, it's going to be very easy to three chest even a plus nine with no big deal. Now, also much of this determined, or I guess is, is rested on your tank, right? Because your tank is the one that actually needs to stay alive. For your DPS, it's basically the same outside of just not standing in fire and making sure you avoid uh, the obvious mechanics. So you're not really getting up to a mythic plus point where actually mechanics will like one shot you or will kill you throughout the course of the boss fight, except for maybe a couple of other um, outliers until you get up to probably plus 10 and above. So really this mostly relies on your tank and to a lesser extent the i guess like the um not the, the yeah the hybrid classes that are in the group to maybe off heal the tank and assist the tank if uh you know something does go wrong so as a tank i would say that obviously you need to make sure that you're built around survivability uh this is not necessarily a bigger a thing that you would want to have like a lot of damage for at the same time unless you're like just super overconfident and you're just like steamrolling plus twos or something like that make sure that you're built around survivability um and also recovery speed uh, especially during uh, fights like being able to self-heal stuff like that would be very very important and we almost uh we did do maw of souls i think we did it in under seven minutes in our best run which was really really awesome we were trying to go for under six but we didn't quite make it and again this was all without a healer so Basically, as a tank, I think that it's really, really important to make sure that you have all of the best survivability cooldowns and everything like that. You know, whenever you pull a big pack, go ahead and use cooldowns. And again, this basically is built around ending the fights so fast that the damage isn't really going to matter in the first place. So make sure you have high damage players and you should be able to do this without really too much trouble. Now, all tanks are not created equal with this. And I think that anybody watching this is probably already thinking, well, if this guy was a blood death knight, it would be a million times easier, which is pretty true. Uh, I do have the, uh, the bracers that give me a heal whenever I use rage. So that is a huge bonus that I have an advantage that I have whenever I'm doing this. But I do feel that even without that, this would be viable. But I would say that Prot Warrior is probably the least of all the tanks, maybe Brewmaster as well, but I don't really know how their self-healing is, uh, the least of all the tanks in terms of viability for doing this. If you're a Prot Paladin, or if you're a Blood Decay especially, I, or a Guardian Druid, maybe, I don't really know how much self-healing they have now, I haven't played one, but especially if you're a Blood Death Knight, you're going to have absolutely no trouble whatsoever getting this done, and surviving all the way up to probably a plus, a plus 9, and even including a plus 9, Whenever you get into the plus 10 affixes, I think that the fortified mobs are going to be doing too much cleave damage to your uh, your melee. Uh, I'm sure that's possible, but it's just not really something that I would do, and I don't think it's worth the trouble. But uh, whenever you are doing like nines or anything like that, under that, it's going to be very easy. As you can see, we just killed Hellion in like three or four seconds. Not really, but it was really fast. It's a point that I'm trying to get at. So I wanted to open your, uh, your idea, your minds to this and potentially give you guys another way of farming these dungeons to keep it fresh, keep it new, and keep it fun, and most importantly, keep it fast. So anyway, guys, I hope this helped you. It's definitely helped me. It's really fun to do this. It's a very cool change of pace, so hopefully it can be the same for you guys. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and like, comment, and subscribe.